Hello, welcome back to Chemistry. It is all that matters and we will continue our journey through chemistry by looking at the periodic table once again, but this time we're going to look at periodic trends. So we've already looked at our periodic table and we realize that the periodic table is arranged in a series of means and uh, one of them is by groups and families and just to revisit this we know that the first column is the alkali metals the second column alkaline earth metals you have the large block in the center the gray block the transition metals then you have a group of metal-like and non-metal-like elements which include the other metals the metalloids and then the non-metals then on the far right you have the halogens and the noble gases and then down at the bottom you have the um, two inner transition metals which include the lanthanides and the actinides. We also remind ourselves that we can look at the periodic table from a series of how orbitals are arranged and the first two columns of the periodic table on the left are considered the S block referring to the S orbital arrangement of electrons then on the far right you have this large green block which is the P block and that would be the secondary orbitals um, of the element then you have the D block where the transition metals are and the lanthanide and actinides make up the F block so our first trend that we're going to look at is the trend for electronegativity now electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract an electron when in a compound and basically what we're looking at is what is the possibility that this atom is going to take on an electron in order to fill the rule of octet which we've spoken of before and we also have to realize that the larger the atom the less likely it is to gain electrons and so with this in mind we look at fluorine up in the upper right having the highest electronegativity 4.0 and francium down in the lower left having the lowest um, electronegativity at 0 0.7 and basically we can follow a general trend now there are some hiccups along the way but basically the trend is that the electronegativity will increase from left to right across the periods and will increase from bottom to top moving up the groups now the noble gases will not have electronegativities or their electronegativities will be so low that they will be basically immeasurable and that's because the noble gases already have filled outer orbitals and therefore do not want those extra electrons so when atoms interact and these elements interact we are looking for what is the possibility the tendency for that atom that elemental atom to gain an electron when it becomes part of a compound and so once again fluorine upper right the highest electronegativity francium lower left lowest electronegativity increasing across periods left to right and increasing up groups the second um, energy trend or trend on the periodic table is ionization energy and this is the energy necessary to remove an electron from an atom while it is in its gaseous state now what we're looking at here is what is the likelihood that this element wants to remove an electron and the less likely it is to remove an electron the more energy it would take to take that electron off and when we've looked at this, if you're looking at one of the noble gases, and helium being the smallest of the noble gases, it does not want to give up electrons. So therefore, it's going to take a lot of energy to take an electron off of helium. Likewise, fluorine. Fluorine having seven electrons in its orbital, it wants eight. Would it rather try to gain one or try to lose seven? Well, because it does not want to lose electrons, it wants to just gain one, it's going to take a lot of energy for fluorine to lose an electron. 
but if you go down to the lower left part of the periodic table, those elements readily want to give up electrons, and they will gladly give up an electron in order to become a positive ion, and again follow that rule of octet. So the ionization energy actually follows the same trend as electronegativity. It is going to increase as we go across periods, left to right, and oh my gosh, this says right to left, so let's fix it. There we go, that's better. So it increases in periods left to right, and it increases moving up the groups. So francium would have the lowest. Actually, francium doesn't have an ionization energy, but lower left corner of the periodic table, lowest ionization energy, highest ionization energy, upper right of the periodic table, moving across periods left to right, it increases, moving up groups it increases. Now the next trend is that of electron affinity and electron affinity is basically the opposite of ionization energy. It is the amount of energy necessary for an atom to add an electron. How much energy it takes to add that electron and become an anion. And this value is actually a negative value. So when you look at this um, actually the highest energy level is the lower left corner and it's negative 47 whereby fluorine in the upper right is negative 340 now because it's negative that is actually a smaller value so we increase down groups and increase left to right and actually this one is actually reversed as well let's fix that also well, there we go. We, now it's correct, and uh, I'm glad we caught that and took care of that now. But it increases in periods right to left and increases down groups. So fluorine has the um, actually the lowest uh, electron affinity, and francium would have the highest electron affinity. Now, this is the inverse of ionization energy, but the strange thing about electron affinities is the second electron affinity to add a second electron actually makes this value positive and so therefore we would follow the same uh, pattern increasing down groups and increasing uh, across periods right to left. Now atomic radii which actually has an effect on all of this because the more compact the element, the atom, the less likely it is to gain or lose electrons and the larger the atom the more likely it is for electrons to be gained or lost. So therefore when we deal with atomic size we have to understand that the smallest elements are to the upper right and the largest elements are to the lower left. Now ionic radii as we change from neutral to positive or neutral to negative we actually have a change in the size of the ion and the ionic radii will actually decrease with a greater charge so the alkali metals which take on a charge of positive one are smaller than when you get over to boron um, and you get to uh, plus three. So the cations, positive ions, decrease with a greater charge, while anions increase with the greater charge, where fluorine takes on a negative one, but um, nitrogen takes on a positive three. So what we have here is, based on the charge, we have a decrease or increase in the size of the ion. Cations get smaller with greater charge, anions get bigger with greater charge and in each case as you go down the columns or groups of the periodic table the ion sizes will get larger. Metallic character. We know that the staircase of metalloids separates the metals from the nonmetals and as you move from the metalloids to the left you are going to gain greater metallic character and as you move from the metalloids to the right, you're going to gain more non-metallic character to your elements. So these are the basic trends that we need to understand um, based on the organization and structure of the periodic table. 
and each of these ha plays a role in how elements and atoms will react and respond as we have chemical reactions taking place and each of these um, trends tend to lend themselves to determine if atoms will respond by bonding in a certain way by sharing electrons called covalent bonding or giving away or taking on electrons which leads to what is called ionic bonding or in other cases you have what are called metallic bonds forming so that act of bonding will be taken up in chapter 7 and 8 and we'll look at that as we continue with our journey through chemistry it is all that matters